So it's the kickoff, huh? We got a podcast, Chicago Hill kickoff, but we should let ladies go first. What you say, Mark? Ladies first, white guy last. Yeah, I agree with that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> ladies first. Well, I'm excited. This is the Chicago Hill podcast with LaShawn K. Ford. And we've got with us Mark Pesakovich. Did I say it right, Mark? See, starting out perfect, perfect. I'm so excited. Ooh, I can't wait. He's such a nice guy. He told you, you said it, he gave you a thumbs up and you said it wrong. Oh. That's so nice. That's mighty white of you, Mark. <laughs> I, I mean, with my last name, it's kind of hard to get it. Uh, you know, it's always wrong, no matter what. It, it's like, it's always too hot or too cold. It's just never but, right, right? But you know what, Mark? I appreciate that. I think that's what society should be like. It shouldn't be gotcha. You were wrong, you know, and, and they will find a way to say your name right, but you don't have to, um, you didn't have to tell her, nope, you got it wrong. And that's that's the way we should be because she tried. And um, yeah, Malika, that was very nice of you to even try. I think he appreciated it. I, absolutely. <laughs> I think, you know, at least uh, Representative Ford was born with one great thing. It's four, le four letter last name. <laughs> so uh, it's lucky. I, I, well, you know, he's going to be Mark from country, here on out. When I came to this country, I had to learn how to spell my last name in English. It took me like a year. Yeah. Wow. So, so Malika, finish telling us who you are and where you're from. Who I am. I'm always more interested in who everyone else is, but I am Malika. I am out of Evanston and started working with Rep Ford, um, what has it been like two years now? It's yeah. been about that length of about time. About two years. Yeah. Uh, met you 2019, uh, worked on legislation together, um, pre enslavement, Black history. And I was like, let me know you when you want to do anything you else. <laughs> wait, you said enslavement? What, what you said? Pre enslavement. Pre enslavement. <laughs> I can't wait. I know we're going to get into that one day on this podcast. <laughs> Yes, yeah. yes. But so, I don't understand. I mean, you're pretty light skinned. You got fine hair and all that. You know, you you would be. Uh... <laughs> I'm not light skinned. I'm brown skinned. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think we just got into black politics inadvertently. <laughs> Mark, have yeah. you ever heard these conversations? The light skin, uh, brown skin, dark yes. skin. And I try to find a corner or behind a couch and hide as quickly as I can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when, when my black friends talk shade of skin color, I know the uh, situation could become volatile and I just <laughs> I just uh, try to hide. So you guys don't have different shades, uh, Mark? You white people, y'all only got one shade? I mean, you, what, what, you got one shade? It's called privileged Caucasian. That's what we're going to be talking about too, that white <laughs> school. If it was, if it was a pink school. If it was at the paint store, that'd be the name of the color. That's a good privilege one. white. Yeah, <laughs> privilege white. You know what? Mm, I think, hey Mark, hey Mark, let's let's Malika, y'all, let's buy a horse and name it Privilege White. Privilege Ooh. White coming around the turn. <laughs> <laughs> and you have people understand he bet not win. He <laughs> bet not win. <laughs> and, 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 and then we'd have to. Um, uh, run it against Black Lives Matter, right? Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my yeah. God. That, that would be good. Black Lives Matter and like, white. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, so, yeah. horse race or the mayoral race in Chicago? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you know what? It's, you probably can't tell the difference. But um, Malika, that was great. It's, it's so nice to kick off this um, Chicago Hill podcast. I'm LaShawn Ford and um, and I'm state rep. I've been state rep now for 15 years. And it's really a privilege to have people like you and uh, Mark uh, to work together and to help me um, be a, a legislator. You know, I mean, if you don't have people that you could count on and listen to and they have patience, understanding the process, it's very difficult to be a legislator and get things done. And so I just say that the fact that I have the privilege to um, have you all as advisors is really great because one, 
There are a lot of people that want things done and they want it done now. And they don't understand that it's a process to get things done. And I've talked to you, Malik and Mark, about things that you really want now. But you guys say, you know what, this may not be the right time. We still have a lot of work to do and we're gonna to continue to work on it to get it where it's at. We're gonna massage the people, educate the people, and maybe it'll be right next year, and maybe it won't. And for that, I just wanna say thank you both. And I think that we can have a great podcast that will talk politics, that will talk life, that will talk race. I was gonna say racism, but that will talk about race. And, and that's what we want. If we don't have, the, a platform where people could talk freely and learn from one another, then we can't heal as a nation. And so with that said, I'm, I'm grateful to be on with you all and, and we're gonna turn it over to Mark. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I am Mark Pesikovich. You can pronounce it however you want. I've been called a lot worse. Uh, and um, I am, uh, I live in Oak Park. I'm a lobbyist and consultant. Um, I work primarily on issues in Springfield. Uh, and I guess within the context of this show, maybe um, I am a, uh, an immigrant, a refugee who came here from another country who I think has a little bit more empathy than your uh, regular American born white guy. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, maybe I'll get into that at some point uh, in greater detail. But for now, I guess I would just say, and, and you guys are. I have heard me say before, I guess uh, I would, uh, I have a name for people like myself. It's WM squared. Uh, that stands for well-meaning white man. Uh, and um, with that, an acknowledgement that well-meaning doesn't always mean understanding, knowing, or right. Uh, and so I look forward to this dialogue. Uh, it's going to be great. I, you know, you guys, we, this is the first one, but you talk about healing. You know, we definitely should definitely send out our condolences to all those suffering from mental health struggles. You know, just recently, there was a believed to be a suicide of um, the former, or not former, but Miss America, Miss, is that right? Miss USA. Miss USA. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from New York. Um, she supposedly fell out of a high rise building. You know, that's a perfect sign that mental health is a serious problem in the world. I mean, beautiful lady, a lot, a lot going for her, but there's obviously was a struggle in her life. And, you know, I, I think that we should all be sensitive to the fact that people may have some things going on in their life and not ignore the fact that people are human. I think that we could be so hard on people, hard on individuals, and, and that, that's, that's tough. We have to be aware. And, and the more and more we see people dying of suicide, it should be a constant reminder that we should be kind to our brothers and sisters. And I don't want to yes. uh, interrupt too much, but I got to cut in with the standard, but still very important. If you are, or somebody you know is contemplating suicide, uh, you're not wrong and you're okay. And you can be helped. And the number to call is 1-800-273-8255, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, 1-800-273-8255. Five, five. And you know, Chesley, uh, Miss USA, when you go back and you look at her, her videos, her posts, you would have never thought in a million years that she was in any sort of pain. I mean, she just came off just so vibrant and, and full of energy and life. Uh, she had just done an interview with Denzel Washington. She, I mean, she was just doing amazing things out there and absolutely just she just seemed like a beautiful spirit. And usually um, with public figures, you, you, you see some sign of it on their social media. They'll, they'll make these posts, you know, when it gets closer to that day. And with her, um, 
you, you just didn't see any, you didn't see any of that. But her last post, she did say something about having peace. And uh, she posted this beautiful um, photo of herself. And you, you just never know what a person is going through. So it's just best to be kind yeah. to everyone. You know, Malika, thank you for saying her name. Let's do a real, do, do, what's, her, what's her name again? Because I said- uh, before, Chesley. Chesley, okay. Yes. And yes. I think that this is, um, it's most fitting that this um, show is dedicated to her so that um, mm -hmm. her life is one that will help save someone else. And Mark, thanks for, um, for giving that 1-800 number out. That means that wherever you live in America, you could call that number. Uh, Mark, you also, you also lobby for a um, mental health um, groups. Is that right? That's right. I'm the lobbyist for the Illinois Psychiatric Society. So I represent the psychiatrists in Illinois. Uh, but um, one of the reasons why that is so important to me is I'm not just a lobbyist. I'm also a client. Uh, as I've mentioned, I'm an immigrant. I came here when I was 10 years old. Um, got beat up in first grade in the bathroom of my school in Moscow for being a Jew. Uh, and um, came here with some PTSD. And the older I get, the more the mind comes back and tries to process what happened decades ago. Uh, and so my own therapy, my own mental health treatment, my own psychiatrist um, is an important part of my overall healthcare system. Um, uh, and um, it's something I take very seriously. There is no health without mental health. There is no separation between mental health and physical health. And, you know, that manifests itself all the time. Look at Alzheimer's just as an example, okay? Is that mental health or physical health? Yes, <laughs> it's all of mm -hmm. the above. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I'm delighted to represent the psychiatrists. Um, I think that they are an important part of the overall uh, mental health uh, system but uh, you can talk to a lot of people. You don't have to talk to a psychiatrist. You can talk to a school counselor. You can talk to a nurse. You can talk to a doctor, talk to a friend, a parent. I find that a lot of times um, if I can just get something out or verbalize it, uh, it actually helps me uh, a lot with my own coping. Mm. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't take time to, to work on their mental health, their healing. Um, what do we say, LaShawn? We don't have time. You know what? Malika, <laughs> Malika, Malika's got a very, very good understanding of this as well. And we continue to talk about it, Mark, Malika, and myself, that you have to take time. Malika, we, we've been talking to a young man that lost his daughter here in Chicago. A young man's daughter was shot in the head on 4th mm. of July on the west side of Chicago, celebrating and playing with her family and friends. And the man actually told us, and of course, Malika probably is gonna say his name and, and um, because she's good like that. And- and Nathan Wallace. Yep, see? And so <laughs> he, he said he went to the store and within minutes, the, his baby was shot. And he had to go back to work within two days because he has three other babies, Malika? Three other three children. Other babies, three other children that he's got to take care of, one with autism. And so, you know, our society definitely needs some healing. And I think it starts with just being kind to one another and recognizing that in your pain, there are other people that share it too, you know? Yes, I, I couldn't believe in that story that his employer, he was working two jobs at the time that it happened, that his employer would not give him paid bereavement time. I mean, his daughter was just murdered. And two days later, you make him come to work and he had to go to work because he's got three other children. So he's he's the he's he's the 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 example of not having time to heal and get that help. And he needs it. He definitely needs it. I mean, that's like a, a, a hole ripped in your soul, you know, and 
he needs he needs I mean, to talk right. to him, but about, he has to keep going. He has to look, keep going. He has about to stay in motion and survive. His family. What about the sisters and and the um, the mother and everyone in the community mm -hmm. saw the uh, tragedy play out. The whole community is experiencing trauma, and yes. you know how do we deal with this? You know, I, and this is something that I'm thinking a lot more and more about um, when we think um, about violence, particularly in uh, communities that are poor economically. Uh, one of the things that I don't think we think about is the fact that it's like living in Vietnam, or like living in Afghanistan. I agree. Uh, and one of the things that, you know, sort of as a white guy who grew up in quiet middle class neighborhoods, uh, I never had to deal with was a lot of my, uh, you know, school friends getting killed or cousins getting killed. Uh, and so one of the things that um, I don't think we think about enough, uh, and I always sort of wondered whether you can inherit trauma. More and more, I believe that you can, that it stays in your, the cells of your body, that it gets transmitted, uh, and that um, the inherited trauma. Yeah, you know what I like to say? I like to say, if if folks inherited as much money as they did trauma, we'd be oh. a lot better off, wouldn't we? Yeah. But mm -hmm. the legacy is trauma, and that legacy gets passed on and on and on and intensifies. And frankly, uh, there's got to be amazing resiliency of folks who see that violence, that trauma around every day um, and can still go on. Like the, and it's, and like look, the guy who went to work. Right. And we're talking just, we're, that's big trauma. Just think about the other trauma that he's been going through with poverty. Poverty mm -hmm. is something that constantly um, inflict trauma on you. If you are a male or parent, right, Malika, you know, you, it's, yeah. and you need to take care of your kids and you see them struggling. That's mm -hmm. trauma. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have economic violence, we have gun violence. And I, I know, you know, my family, we've experienced uh, a lot of loss um, due to murder, gun violence. And my mother, I remember a, a therapist told my mother, she was, he was like, you, you haven't had time to grieve or mourn. And she was like, I have two children. You know, I, I have to, I don't have time. I don't have time to heal or mourn or grieve. I have children to take care of. I have to keep going. But eventually that pain catches up with you. It, it has a way of resurfacing, usually at the most inopportune time in your life. Usually when your career is great. <laughs> You know, and all of a sudden, you know, you you you're freaking out and things start to crumble because you haven't dealt with these old emotions. Um, but trauma, trauma is deep and that economic violence, we definitely will be tackling on Chicago yeah. Hill. <laughs> and, and you know, you know, Malika, I think we definitely will talk about what um, inherent trauma that Mark talked about. We talked about this uh, in some chats with some uh, at some other shows, but we never talked about it on the podcast. But there, we've had some people come on that psychologists, psychiatrists talk about trauma that's passed on. And mm -hmm. I, I would just say one other thing that we have to remember: if you're poor, it's almost unaffordable, and it's a luxury to heal. Right? We we talk to someone if you poor, you just have to keep on ticking. <laughs> and you really don't have the luxury to heal. You don't have any extra rope. Uh, there's no margin for error. Uh, and uh, that's a terrible thing when there's no margin for error in life, when there isn't a margin for some food if you don't work for a few days or, or things like that. And, uh, and you know what? I think part of the problem is, and you know, maybe at some point we'll have to talk about solutions and not just problems, but I think part of the problem is that there's sort of fewer and fewer people in the middle, right? You're, you're either uh, experiencing trauma and have very little to uh, fall back on, or you're wealthy and your trauma is of a, of a different sort. Now, 
just because you're wealthy doesn't mean uh, you're inherently less likely to have mental health issues, but you are inher inherently less likely probably to have inherited uh, the genetic trauma of people who watch their relatives being whipped and lynched and beaten and enslaved. And so it just this is what I mean. If you start from less than zero, you got to get to zero before you can get to positives. Oh. Uh, and we got to do something because right now you're either a millionaire or you got nothing. And there's less and less and less and less mm -hmm in the middle. Well, I think that one of the things that I would say, and just speaking for myself, I know that I've been through a lot. And, and if I didn't have resources and family, people to love me, people that I could talk to, it could be rough. And so just the fact that I'm able to feed my child, my daughter, and able to not worry about where I'm going to sleep, not worry about whether or not I could go see a doctor, that's helpful. Now, imagine if I didn't have that blessing and I still had to deal with all the trauma that I've gone through in life. That's that short rope that you're talking about. Well, and, and um, I, I actually wonder about you, uh, Representative Ford, because uh, I think resiliency should be your middle name. I mean, if there was ever a guy who was beaten down by life, whose uh, birth uh, mother well, has been, had been a, a lifelong uh, drug addict, yeah, raised by grandmother. And one of the things that I love about you is that you and I are both open about talking um, where our trauma comes from and how we're dealing with it. But, you know, when I talk about you, uh, I've been a proud constituent for a long time, by the way, not for much longer, but I yeah. assume we'll still stay friends. Um, but if there was ever a guy who could have been beaten down by life, and even now you're a state representative, you get accolades and you get praise, but I'm sure every other, uh, you know, post on Facebook can be acerbic, can be critical. Uh, you always got people who are saying, good things and bad things, and you got to deal with both. How do you deal with, a, what are you, what are the tools that you, I mean, I know now you're a state rep, you got everything you need more or less. Um, <laughs> although anybody who thinks being a state rep makes you rich is, uh, is wrong. It's not a bad gig, but it's <laughs> definitely not for millionaires either. Um, but how do you deal with sort of what life has dealt you? Uh, and the, the, the sort of the offenses against you every day, as it were. Yeah, personal offenses, personal attacks against my family, friends, you know, even, and I never told you to, but the man, I never met my um, biological father, but the man that actually was the man in my life actually committed suicide too. He slit his wrist, and that was during, um, like, in right when I got elected. So that's trauma. We, our family, the man that we love actually committed suicide and families will often wonder, could we have done something to help him with his struggles? And you know, how do I deal with it? I, I stay prayerful and I understand every day I learn life better and better. I know no good deed goes unpunished. And there is no doubt I will um, be grateful for the opportunity to breathe again and to try to be more better as a person. You know, no matter what you do to me, I'm going to um, turn the cheek like Dr. King and just keep on um, ticking and love you no matter what. I think that's the only way. I don't let what a person is doing to me fester in my soul and spirit because that's poison, you know? And so I think that we're about to wrap up too. And I know Malika, you guys, and Mark, I hope you give that number again because it's a powerful number. And I hope that we could um, continue to do this podcast and um, be a friend to many as we share our stories and do what we can to um, 
be a part of a good society. Most definitely. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-8255. Uh, use it if you need it. Uh, you're not a bad person if you do. Thanks for having me with you guys. So um, I'm looking forward to great conversations. Yes, yes. And and I wanted to add, I have seen Rep Ford in hearings go up against some very evil people who are not about equality, equity, inclusiveness, diversity. And I, I look at him in amazement because I'm like, how do you deal with these people and still work with them and still have a great relationship with them? And you know to their core that they don't like you. And so I, I've learned. I have learned. You're absolutely right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's not about you liking me. I'm going to make you love me. <laughs> right, 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 right. You, um, you fight for what's right. And I, I truly believe the good ends up winning. Yeah. So In the end, yeah. That's it. That's all, folks. <laughs> See you guys next time. All right. <laughs>